Well, um, here's something interesting. I'm not recording in my car this week because everybody has gone out, so I can record in my room. You know, I have a real big problem today, and I will get into that shortly, but, you know, hello, and welcome back to The Lion's Den. I'm your host, Matt, as always, and mm, this could be potentially a... Uh, a, um, a short episode. I don't know, I don't really want to try and waffle too much if it's not entertaining or interesting, but... I don't have a topic for discussion today, and last week was particularly boring for me, to be perfectly honest. I got a cold last weekend, basically the day after I recorded last week's episode, um, I then had a cold. To be fair, when I was recording that episode, my throat felt like I'd eaten razor blades, and then the day after, I couldn't breathe out of my nose, so that's fun. But weirdly, it's been like the quickest cold of my life. I actually was really bad Tuesday, I think. Um, Monday, Tuesday were bad, and then by Wednesday, I was just fine. Um, I even went to work, I had a nice day, and literally throughout the day, I felt better and better, and by today now, I'm, like, practically fine. My nose is a little bit stuffy, but what can you say? I don't know if that's because I've recently had the vaccine, or rather, I recently had the booster vaccine a couple months ago, so maybe my immune system is still kind of souped up and jacked to fight against, well corona but um you know (laughs) what can i say uh i can't explain it any other way um yeah so i was just trying to figure out what i should talk about for this episode and i thought oh you know what would be stupid is i'll just google talking topics right and there's a a suggestion of what people also ask which are what are some deep conversations uh to have basically uh and it started out kind of general you know where's your life headed pretty big question to ask people because a lot of people don't know what they're doing um and then the second one is how do you think you'll die (laughs) which is like what how how, are you planning i mean i suppose depending on the profession you're in you could know how you think you'll die um but for most people i think they'll just say something along the lines of oh in my sleep when i'm really old and uh, like what else are you supposed to say oh i think i'm gonna get hit by a car when i'm 55 and I'll smack my head against the road. I don't know. The next one is then back to being quite easy. What's the highest and lowest points of your life? Um, And then it hits real deep and says, what is holding you back from being the person you want to be? Hmm. I suspect most people's response to that would be money um, and time because they are two very vital things to be able to do literally anything in this society that we live in. You know, have you heard the whole concept that time is a currency? Uh, I'm ripping this basically from Domics on YouTube, Uh, the concept that you spend time or you invest time, like literally that's a phrase, you have to invest time into something to be good at it or to produce something or to get something out of it. And it's this concept that you have a finite amount of time in this currency, you don't know how much of that you have, because if you knew how much you had, then you'd be able to spend it possibly way better than you do currently. But you only have so much, and once it's spent, it's gone. It's not like money where you can kind of get money and you can spend money. It's a resource that just is constantly being spent, and depending on how you use it, it's either worth it or not. So, yeah, but to be the best person, you need to have time, and most people do not have spare time to give (laughs) towards becoming your better self. Um... Yeah, the next thing it asked is how have your strengths helped you to succeed? Um, I think to be honest, my big, my biggest strength, I'm just going to talk about myself now. Uh, my biggest strength is being able to listen to people like really well. I'm really bad at speaking about myself. Um, so the minute somebody says to me um, like a question about myself or my person personal life or they want to know something about me i'm absolutely god awful at that but if if you want to talk go for it i will just sit there smile and nod and maybe give the occasional bit of advice or just a i like a thoughtful question that makes you come to a decision rather than me telling you a decision i think that's what i learned specifically is that if you want to be that person that everyone's like oh wow they're really nice they listen to me they don't overstep or anything The key to that is don't immediately jump to giving advice. Sometimes people just want to say things to vent, to just get stuff off the chest or to just air out their own thoughts. Um, I know specifically myself that just talking aloud when I'm in a confusing situation or in a tough scenario, it helps me process it because it's like I'm having a conversation with someone about the problem and it gives my brain space to kind of 
process the information and think about it. And sometimes that's what people want. If you are immediately trying to provide solutions, people kind of sometimes take it a bit the wrong way. Like, oh, you're trying to help when I'm not asking for your help. Um, I'm very much like that. I sometimes just want to say stuff but people then try and give me solutions to fix the problem. I'm like, I know how to fix the problem. I don't want you to tell me. I'm just trying to air it out. And, you know, it helps just being able to talk to people, uh, not necessarily have a back and forth or a resolution. Because, you know, problems are complicated and people's lives are complicated. And sometimes you can't just suggest something. It's not simple enough to just say, oh, you could do this, because from your side, you can see, like, that solves the problem, but they may be holding back information, or not giving you the full story, or there's problems with external factors that they can't control that you're not accounting for, you know, it's, it's weird, everyone has a very multifaceted situation that they're sat in currently, and you can't possibly know everything that they know, and they can't possibly explain everything, because well, some things are subconscious, some things are internalized that you don't have the ability to access and to provide. So if you want to be a good listener, don't immediately jump to saying, here's what you should do to fix your problems, or here's what you should do, because I think it would be good for you. Like the most annoying people to me are those that say X opinion, and that you should therefore agree with them. Like, I know it's kind of stupid, but the other week I was at uh, one of the game nights. We were discussing different games that we liked and which ones that we played and which ones we hadn't played. And there were some people that would just say like, oh, this game is the best game ever. You really should play it. And like, no, 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 you really should play it. And I'm sat there like, okay, thank you for your opinion. But no, like, the biggest one for me is any Pokemon game. They're all, everyone has their Pokemon game that they absolutely freaking adore. Um, and I it, I know from experience that Pokemon games are not really suited for me. I do not like turn-based stuff. But people don't... Th those kind of people don't consider that fact, that you like a specific type of game as opposed to what they like. Um, and they just know that that game is absolutely fantastic in their mind, in that you should be playing this, and you will find it absolutely fantastic. Like, if I was to give an example, I love Breath of the Wild. I think Breath of the Wild is absolutely fantastic. I'm ignoring possibly a multitude of issues and problems with it, but I don't care. I absolutely friggin' love the game. But I'm not gonna go and say to someone, oh, you have to play this. The only instance where I'll do that is if I know the person is a huge Zelda fan. If they're a huge Zelda fan, then yeah, I'm gonna push them to play Breath of the Wild because I think they will love it. If they're still kind of going like, mm, no, I'm not really sure, then I'm not gonna keep hammering because I know you, ha you like what you like and th there's no point pushing against it. So... Uh, that's, I digress, that's a bit of a run. <laughs> but yeah, that's just a whole, that's just about listening, you know, uh, something I picked up. My parents always said to me, like, why are you so wise for how young you are? And my, I attribute that to the fact that I just, I sit and listen, I don't ever overstep the mark. If somebody wants to ask me for advice or help, then yeah, I will give it, but I'm waiting for you to ask me, I'm not going to give it to you, unless I think it is vital that I provide something. So, yeah, wow, that was a weird... <laughs> well, they got me, they did say it was a deep conversation topic, and yeah, off we went. The funny thing is, the very last one in this list is, who are you really? Um, which is a very complicated question, especially in today's society, because, you know, everyone has the access to the internet, where you can hide behind a persona online and be whoever you want. I mean, I'm doing it right now. I'm being this persona of a chatty person on a podcast. And people who know me in real life, as I've just explained, I'm quite quiet, quite reserved. I will not immediately go and launch into my life story unless asked. And even then, I will struggle to launch into it because I don't like talking about myself particularly much. I suppose this is this podcast has been a bit of an exercise in one, boosting my own confidence, but two, also learning how to talk about myself in a non-annoying way, which you will be the judge of whether I've done that or not. I think the person that I am is the person I want to be depending on who I'm with, which is both a good and a bad thing, because it depends the person that you're being. If you're being an absolute horrible person because of the people you're around, then yeah, that's bad. If you're being, I don't know, super quirky and funny and hilarious because you're with your friends, that's cool. If you're being very professional and, yeah, just professional, that's the only word, whilst you're at work, then yeah, that's also good. And that's, I think, a cheater's way of answering who are you really, because we are 
whoever we are needed to be in a given scenario. As long as you're not completely hiding or suppressing parts of yourself because you don't have a safe space, then I think you're in a good position. And if you don't have a safe space, then you need to either find it or create it. Yeah, I went very deep in this week's episode. Sorry about that. Oh, that's what I get for not knowing what to talk about. Um, okay. Stay safe. Um, have a nice week. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.